white van car. White van car, absolutely. Um, do you want to explain the premise? Well, um, we take some of the son asks someone else and asks Carl. It's as simple as that. That's the right. son of just taken a normal person, we flipped it. <laughs> We're gonna ask Carl the same questions about the week's news. Yeah, just basically your opinions, Carl, as ever. Um, what do you make of, well, obviously the big news, David Beckham's broken foot? Is this uh, a big concern for you? No, I mean, it's sad, you know, um, it's sad, it's sadder for him more than anyone, cause you know, to, to like, be in the World Cup is like the main thing for him, isn't it? Yeah. But he's still a young lad, and, uh, I don't think he'll give up, I reckon he'll still turn up, uh, yeah. he'll be alright, and, uh, yeah, good luck to the lad. You know I like David, I'm not gonna slag him off. <laughs> what <laughs> his words? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He says that like he knows him. <laughs> like he's popping round for drinks later. <laughs> yeah, like we tried to stitch you up. Go but, on. um, obviously yesterday, was it yesterday, I think, maybe th maybe Thursday, uh, The Sun printed a big picture of, uh, David's, uh, foot mm. and encouraged everyone to touch it at midday, because hoping that this would somehow, um, if we all thought and prayed together, somehow that would help his foot heal. Do you, do you believe in that? No. Do you have any belief in that? No, you're going down the old, like, you're a gala route, aren't you? Sure. And uh, it's stupid. Yeah. I'm sure, I mean, it's nice effort and everything, it sort of cheers everyone up. Hold on, <clears throat> you believe in ghosts and warlocks yeah. and uh, licking toads. How, uh, wh why, why is that any more stupid and all those things? It just, it, it's not gonna work, is it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Fine. It's rubbish. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, what about this then? There's, uh, apparently now available 1.5 million pound apartments available on an exclusive ship which sails around the world. Yeah, it's like, uh, you make of that? it's a huge thing and you just, you, you live on it and it's, I mean, in theory- How big, how big is it? It's, um, it's mental. Do you it's know like huge a town island. in the centre. Do you know how, like, people said that the Titanic was the biggest ship? Was that only then? They've got yes. bigger ones now, haven't they? Yeah. A lot bigger. Oil tankers are much bigger and- yeah. No, but actual liners are big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was the biggest then, yeah. Because my mum told me that there was one that that was that was that big that it had like rough areas on it. Oh, don't go starboard. Oh God! No, but do you know That's what I mean. It was like we're, a, we're thinking of moving. We're seeing yeah. the captain. We're thinking of moving to a nicer <laughs> area. Oh, yeah. And then, <laughs> I've heard they're very rough in aft. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that's <laughs> They fantastic. steal your tyres. That how? ship's so big that was <laughs> rough areas. Oh. How, how big is this one that, that you're <sighs> talking about? Uh, well, I don't know, it doesn't oh. give me the spe specifications here, but they're, it's they're huge. huge. They're huge. Um, in theory, I mean, it's, it's that thing with, um, uh, it's obviously marketing, but, um, they're gonna, um, uh, solve, uh, the, uh, um, overpopulation crisis where soon we'll all be just be floating around the sea, yeah? but- Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see that, cos I mean, think about it, right, I've been talking to Ricky about it, I was hoping to buy somewhere in London but there is no way in this world that I can afford it, right? Um, and you look at all the, all the wasted space, like, with the Thames, all <laughs> it's doing is, like, collecting crisp packets and stuff and yeah. Coke cans and people have to clean it up, whereas if you think, if you got a load of boats on there- Yeah. Problem Perfect. solved. Yeah. Would you live on a boat? Problem solved. Uh, what's his name did it, didn't he? Uh, what's that program? Is it Bergeron? Noah. <laughs> oh, Bergerac? There was one where, where he lived on a boat, I think it's quite- was That it was a shoestring. Yeah, I, I'd give it a go anyway. <laughs> no, uh, I'd like to see you, um, living in, in the air, maybe in a giant hot air balloon. Yeah, alright. But, um, no, the boat thing, um, cause it, it, it is gonna get bad as well, isn't it? They're saying that the water's melting or whatever. The water's melting, the, yeah. The ice is melting. Yeah. And, and there's gonna polarized. be more water and less land, so yeah. in the future it's probably gonna be the way we're gonna be living, isn't it? Have you seen that film Waterworld? Nah, I don't fancy it. Because that, 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 that sort of predicts that, yeah. What, are they saying that the ice thing exactly. as well? Exactly, yeah. But at the same time, um, I was thinking about this a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> if you get, I mean, I think I read that, like, a big chunk of ice, uh, fell off one of the ice, uh, what do you call them? Caps. Ice caps. Something like, the, I think they said it's the size of the Empire State Building or something. Right. It, it snapped off and went into the water and it's melted. And they saying, oh, it's bad news, you know, that, that something that size is melting. But the way I look at it, if something that size falls into the water, it's like a big ice cube and it's gonna freeze it up again. You, are you with me? Not that, really, Carl. Go on. Right, you get a giant ice cube yeah. the size of the Empire State Building, yeah. stick it in the water, yeah. it's gonna make, uh, that. it's gonna stick back on again, isn't it? 
well, no, the steam uh, only if again. it freezes up again. Yeah, well, it will freeze the up. The water's well, going to get cold again because you've just put a giant ice cube in the water. Well, so when you put <laughs> when you put an ice cube in a drink, the drink doesn't freeze, does it? No, the ice melts. Not, if you put one the size of an Empire State Building in your glass of Jack Daniels, it's going to make it freezing. <laughs> It's not going in a glass of Jack Daniels, it's going in the ocean. I know, but I'm- that- you see that I'm using me fables. Imagine a world- <laughs> Use your brain instead! Imagine the world- <laughs> imagine the sea- Yeah. Like the Arctic or whatever, as yeah. a glass of Jack Daniels. Okay. A big ice cube falls into it. Yeah. It freezes, it melts back on again. So it's- we're all right, I don't know why everyone's worrying. <laughs> oh, guys, God! <laughs> Thank God for that, I was getting panicked. Oh, fine. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, that will happen. <laughs> Got another one there? Uh, well, it's just uh, another- your thoughts really on, uh, the Queen Mum's, uh, very British send-off that she was given this week. Yeah. What do you make of all those people queuing up to see her? Did you think that was incredible? Right. Well, what we said last week, you know, there was a- I, I don't quite understand why there was so many people there, um, who were, like, getting really upset. Do you know what I mean? Really upset. Crying and stuff and, you know, you can lose someone who's, like, related to you and you don't- you don't cry like that. You sort of sit there and you think back to what you did with them and stuff and- and then that's it. But, um, <laughs> the queue thing, it was, wasn't it like miles long and stuff? Yeah. It was, yeah. Right, I was sat watching this with Susan. Twelve hours that. queuing. Yeah. It never got and to twelve hours. It did, but it that did. was the estimated time. No, mm. How you know, long is a queue when they're just like, you know, walking along? Think how far you can sort of like, st you know, stagger in twelve hours. Incredible. It's been ridiculous. Go yeah. On. But, again, you know, if they want to do that, it's their time and that, isn't it? And it's, yeah. It was at the weekend, so they, they could have, it's not as if they got out of work to do it. No. You know, I mean, they use their own time, so good on them. But I thought, right, what they could have done, remember when I studied Che Guevara? Yep. Yeah. Right? Um, and don't be offended by this, it was just an idea, because they did it with Che Guevara. Remember when they cut him up? Yes, remember? they- they cut him up, yeah. What was the reason for cutting him up? Uh, well, they cut up Che in order to try and, um, what they, you, you- you told us that they were gonna send bits of his body to Fidel Castro and various other people, wasn't that right? Uh, uh, as- as a warning, wasn't it, though, to all the- to people, like, one to- Yeah, uh, my- my understanding was that they cut him up in order to, um, so they could bury him in different places so that there'd be one no shrine, there'd be, like, no, what, not one place that you could go to in order right. to- Right. Well, to a little sort of make bit like a that. Little bit like that. I've, like, I six can vaguely see where this is going. Six cues, and it's like, number one, you can, you know, go and pay respect to her head, or whatever. Oh, God. No, but think. I just was thinking the way of, of speeding it up. I'm not having a go, I'm not- because they haven't done it, so it doesn't matter. God. But they did it with Che Guevara. Yeah. Everybody would have felt like they've got close to her. <sighs> And it would have speeded it up. No, I mean, but I can understand. Can I just head. say that genuinely, Carl is not being disrespectful here. This is his best idea to to cut down the queues. So don't phone in. He's not suggesting we should have done this. He genuinely well, he is. is. It's, well, but I mean, he's not doing it to be nasty or wacky or or you know. He thinks this is a good idea. So can just I just throw a thought? Che Guevara was like a, a powerful man. He did a lot for the world and what yeah. have you. Yeah. Yeah. And have you, are you aware that I, I feel slightly responsible for this because have you heard of the quote, um, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing? Yeah. Okay. Steve, next mm, one. No, just, just, just a very quick question. I can understand those that have queued for 12 hours to see the head. <laughs> I'd be a little bit annoyed if I got there to find a toe. I'll tell you what though, I'll tell you what they could do without chopping her up. They could put about nine queues, each could see each hip she had. <laughs> That's true enough. Cause she's- she's had about nine of them, yeah. so it'd just be, uh, uh, if you want to see the whole body, it's twelve hour queue. If you just want to see a couple of the hips- Here's another suggestion for you, I've just thought, <laughs> right? What? Instead of everyone queuing to see her, why not put her on a trolley <laughs> <laughs> and wheel her past everyone else? Running. So uh, yeah, you could have- you could have some students on rag week, they can combine <laughs> it. Like when they're always pushing a bed. Yeah. You know, they could just run it along <laughs> the, oh. the queue. No, that'd, that'd be, be fantastic. That'd, that'd be disrespectful. <laughs> right, as opposed to the chopping up. So. Sure. Right. But, but just- just an idea. Just I apologise now. Anyone yeah, yeah. offended? Yeah, Anyone offended, I'm sorry, but Yeah. Okay, finally, um, this is more frothy. Liz Hurley lying low, apparently, at Elton John's house to try and avoid the press now that she's had a child. That's a good mm -hmm. place to go to avoid the press. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Elton John's house, yeah. Everyone seems to be friends with Elton John, yeah, don't they? Every they, celebrity's they, friends they pop into Elton John's house? What is he running some sort well, of- it was like when Robbie Williams was a drunkard and a drug addict, he went to Elton John's. Yeah, yeah and who's the other fellow that went there as well? Was someone to, you know, to recuperate and, uh, cry, shoulder to cry on. Is, yeah. is he giving out false yeah. f passports? But I don't like know if people have seen his history. He's not the man of, you know, I mean, I know he's cleaned himself up now, but, you know, uh, maybe yeah. that's it. Maybe he's got this kind of insight into, uh, how to deal with celebrity. Yeah. What well, do you think? I think he's just genuine oh. mates with him. I think he's I just like so. a friendly I bloke. I think she's been doing too much lying low in the first place. That's part <laughs> of the problem, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> High five, Carl. That was a genuine joke.
from Carl there, and he's so proud of himself. Look at his little face. Too much lying low. <laughs> Oh, that was no, Mike Van Kamp. No, why, why can't she just go around to her mum and dad's or something rather than Elton John where everyone's looking? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's the point, isn't it? Yeah. White Van Carl. Yeah, White Van Carl. I mean, uh, for those that don't know, we do this, uh, We ask Carl the questions that the son asks someone else. That's right, the son every day asks, um, some, you know, average Joe, his views on the week's big stories. Mm. Carl, let me ask you now, um, what do you make of Prince Harry smoking openly at a polo club? Um, Are you aware of this story? No. Was it? Go on. Prince Harry, you know that he's one of the royals. Yeah. And he was seen smoking openly, openly, a fag, a cigarette. Uh, a polo third, third in line to the throne. Something like that, yeah. Imagine that. Someone hey. smoking a cigarette who's third in line to the throne. A cigarette, Carl. Is it a non-smoking polo club? Do you know, I don't know, but, uh, but if it were, would that make things even worse for you? Well, no, yeah. seriously, what, what do you make of it? This is, this is, you know, the whole, you know, the, the furore is he's a role model, you know, he's a royal, should he be seen puffing away in a public place? I don't think it matters, does it? Not concerned for you? How old is he? Is he old enough to smoke? I think he probably is, yeah. Right, yeah. Well, I, I, I think the trouble with, um, this role model thing with anything that's legal, it should either be illegal or not. Yeah. I just don't think you can impose things like that, well, yeah. uh, because you could say that it is bad for you and it is bad to start smoking and it really is bad for you and it, you know, it causes cancer and everything. But everyone so knows that, don't they? Uh, well, yeah, but you should either make it illegal or shut up about it. So this is Carl you're asking, isn't I it? I am indeed. So, sorry, so yeah. we can throw these questions uh, your way as well <laughs> if you fancy. Sorry, them. yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't so, matter. But Carl, what are your views generally? I mean, it's obviously cigarettes are uh, perfectly legal and so on, but what about stronger narcotics? Because I know you're very scared of drugs and stuff, aren't you? You're yeah, I don't, I'm not a fan. I don't no, what's your concern? What's your worry? Just yeah. that you might get into them. Sure. It's like you might have them and go, oh, this is alright. Yeah. Exactly, Carl. Yeah. Exactly. Um, uh, Although I was talking to you about it earlier and you weren't that very, you weren't very sympathetic about a lot of young people who, who have perhaps gone to crack or smack. You, you, didn't you describe it as their own fault? Sometimes it is, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I could have turned to it where <laughs> I grew up, but I said, well, don't want to do that, it's not good for you. Sure. And I avoided it. You turned to ghosts. So you've so got no sympathy for anyone who's, who's a drug addict? It's their own fault, is your- It depends, doesn't it? Sure. Do you know what I mean? You can be an addict if, I don't know, something, I'm trying to think of a nice way that well, you Well, most might people start on stuff like that because something really traumatic happened to them. Very few people go out for a laugh yeah. one night and, and, and go, let's all try it. Sure. So, uh, you know, but- yeah. Just anyway. say no, I suppose it's the, uh, the, the attitude no. in the Just say no, listen to the, uh, cast of Grange Hill. Now, this will scare you. Now, this, Carl, you will be a little bit unnerved about this. Have you seen the film Jurassic Park? Yeah. You know what happened there? Well, according to yeah. the sign here, it says scientists are planning to clone mammoths for a theme park. Look at his face, look at that, he looks like a dog caught in the, the headlights of a car, he's terrified. I love Carl. He sprung to attention Carl. there. I love that's, is that, is that the best news you could have? Man moths. <laughs> <laughs> Right, yeah, man Carl, moths. I man love moths. the fact that that's why he was so excited that they bred a man moth. What is what is this? Yeah, it's it's a human being that that hides in your wardrobe and eats an entire jacket in a day. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean, man moths? Mammoths. Mammoth. The big hairy cow the from mammoth? the ice age. I mean, right. elephant. You're not so excited yeah. about that, then? <laughs> you can take or leave bringing back mammoths to life, but a man moth- A man moth is a different matter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if we'd- if we'd have never brought that up, he'd have gone and told someone now- Yeah. You know, they've bred an half man, half moth. This and is that's what how, we mean. things start. This you is what we mean when you, you hear these ghost stories. Are you stories? slightly deaf? Is that it? When you hear these stories, you're slightly deaf and his head- and his head was in the basket and he went, count how many times I blink. Is it- I- is- Carl, uh, Carl, is English your first language? <laughs> Are you actually foreign? Is that yeah, the thing? Yeah, yeah. Should we well, speak slower? When we slower? say foreign, we, we mean not of this planet. Yeah. Should we speak slower? Would that be a help to you? No, go, go on. Next what do you one. make of that? Do you think that's good? Do we do have to bring back, back mammoths? Uh, <laughs> These giant elephants. They're, they're slow, aren't they? It's not as if they're gonna, like, get out and run fast and they can't capture them. They'll probably be offence, to be honest, Carl. They'll probably be offence. No, but I'm saying- but they're- but you're asking it as if, like, oh, it could all go wrong, but it couldn't, could it? Well, really? but, 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 but the point was about uh, Jurassic Park is they thought it wouldn't go wrong, they thought they had it all under yeah, control. Well, Have you learned nothing from uh, Jurassic Park, Carl? Dinosaurs would say, oh, f think about it before you do it, <laughs> but with a, with a airy elephant, it's, it's not gonna- Not a concern for you? Would I'll you go along to see him? Would you be interested in it? If it was in the area. <laughs> <laughs> 
he's the best. He's great, isn't he? I'd love, I'd love a cue. Nothing right? impresses me. No, but what I'd like to do is Carl sitting like Yoda in a little cave, and I'd just like to see people like Tony Blair and you know Stephen Hawking's in a queue, and they go and say, Carl, got a bit of a problem. Um, yeah, and thinking it, of cloning a man and a moth. Yeah, problem? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not an issue. No, if I'm in the area, I might cruise around and have a look at it. Otherwise, just don't send it near my, uh, my uh, clothes. Oh, that's fantastic. So, so it's just for a what, second. What, as, the, as the words "man moth" came into your head, how excited were you? I mean, were you both terrified and excited for just for the moment when you thought that they'd cloned a man and a moth? I pictured, um... What kind of face uh, did he have? Was, uh, did he have the moth's head, or was it a man's head? Just a little head. Little man head. Right, what, what was his face? <laughs> what did it look like? Just, he just was like, a bit, like, a bit, bit shocked. perplexed, yeah. <laughs> um... Yeah, it, like, so it was like, he'd been, he'd been, he'd been grafted onto the body of a moth yeah. without his, his consent. And when he was asleep. Word, yeah, he'd woken up. He just, he just went in for, to have a goiter removed, yeah. and they said, we've he replaced your with goiter wings. with the body of a giant moth. Yeah. Just Is that all right, Mr. Jenkins? Mm, so sorry. he had the head of a, a little, was it a little boy or a man? Little man. Right, okay. And he's just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> he's just bumping into a lamp. <laughs> if you, Carl, if you, if you uh, went into hospital and, and they'd done something, uh, what, what's the worst thing they could do, right? What would you rather have done, do you, right? You wake up and you've got, um, lobster claws for hands. Right. You wake up and you've got duck's feet. Uh, or you wake up and you've got one horn coming out of your head. The worst thing. Yeah. Probably the, uh, <laughs> the horn coming out of my head. Why? Get in the way. <laughs> That'd be useful, wouldn't it? In fights and stuff. And, uh, for, like, parties, people would play well, points. the lobster claws would also be quite handy, there. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> what confuses you? When you look out your window, what confuses you with the world? What, would you walk around going, oh, that's a bit weird? I remember... Um, when you were in, uh, Edinburgh, you were confused because you saw someone putting a parking ticket on some rubbish, <laughs> which confused yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. That, that was weird. Yeah. Um, the world's a crazy place, isn't sure. it? I mean, whatever you look at, you can... <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like what? Like what? Well, d anything. I mean, you could look out the window there and you'll see something you go, why are they, why are they doing that? Yeah. Why are they doing that for? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you this, uh, this, maybe we should bring back White Van Carl. There's some interesting questions this week, Rick. Yeah. We could, we could pull that out of the bag if you want. Shall we do that? Just to uh, get, uh, Carl's take on, uh, the world's- Let's do it. Let's do it. I think we set Carl up again in the last hour as a person that people want to know- Yeah, they want to know what opinions thinking. on the world, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, uh, yeah. if you're not familiar with it, uh, on Saturdays the Sun newspaper, um, asks a typical white van driver questions, uh, his opinions on the week's news, mm. and, uh, we thought we'd throw these in the direction of Carl. Um, yeah. God. And then what do you make, uh, what do you make of, uh, this teenage thug, Carl, Mickey Carroll, who spent four months in jail and he's won 9.7 million on the, uh, lottery? Is that justice? When you think of all the good people that are going hungry? And there's a lad there and he's won Did he buy the ticket before 7. he went in? Uh, no, I think he bought it once he'd come out. So he's, he's done his time. He's done his time. Fair enough then, he's, he's been punished. Yeah. Right? He's bought a ticket. He's had a lot of bad luck. Mm-hmm. Now he's having a bit of good luck. Quite good luck right. Next one. Are Next you concerned one. that now he's got all that money, he could turn into like a sort of mastermind villain? You know, like a James Bond style villain? He's Ooh. got a criminal streak, we know that. Is that a concern for you? Well, I mean, we you imagine don't. that he could build we, some kind of underwater fortress. We don't, with, with, with my lawyer's hat on, we don't know that. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'd have to prove that he didn't have a criminal streak. <laughs> I'd say, so you've been in jail for four months. <laughs> yeah. yeah but sometimes but people are bad because they haven't got any money, so he might be just an angel of gold now. Or yeah, yeah. Is. Um, yeah. one in five children aged between 11 and 16 go on booze binge sessions at least once a week. That's terrifying news, isn't it? Kids, they, they know, they know too much now. Yeah. yeah. Um, you despair. Despair. You, you yeah. despair. <laughs> yeah. Know, right? yeah. Listen to this one, right? Go on. My dad had me, uh, niece in the car, right, running her to school one day. And, uh, she was in the back of the car with a mate. And they were chatting away about stuff like kids do. Um, and he got onto the topic of one of the mates who he said, uh, I mean, you've got to remember, niece, this point was probably about five or six, something mm. like that, right? Mm. In the back of the car, talking about My Little Pony, whatever it is they play with. Uh, subject changed. Um, oh, that Lisa in, uh, in our class, she's a lesbian, isn't she? Right. <laughs> that was the t that's what they were talking about. Yeah. Chatting away about it. <laughs> Just openly talking about yeah. lesbianism. And probably, you know, <laughs> this is the topic that they're talking about in the pub when they're having one. <laughs> Out drinking. Yeah. Yeah, but they might have thought a lesbian was a, 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 
you know, a, a funny word or something. You don't, you don't necessarily know the, the ins and outs of it, do they? It's, it's weird though, isn't it? Because when I was, when I was younger at school, you didn't like, I mean, you swore a little bit, but it wasn't like major swear words. And you sort of did a little bit of nicking, but nothing like they get up to now. I mean, if- My, my, um, girlfriend, when she was about seven or eight, she was walking to school with her mum, and she called her a C-U-N, right? You are Joe. No, she said, oh, you are, because she thought it was a big, she said she thought it was a big furry animal. She so she was being nice, and I remember, like, where'd you do that? Where'd you do that? Like, just heard it at school. So they might, you know, they might not know what it means. Well, I tell you, you know, um, I have to, I'm gonna have to use kind of euphemisms here to tell right. this story, but when I was at school, I learned, you know the stronger version, it's not the same word, but it's very similar with one letter change. I'm gonna use twit. Yeah. You know the word I'm thinking of. Yeah. But I, I'm gonna use the word twit to replace it, right? And I said, I went round- Do you think that's what? Yeah. All that's, right. That's what I'm thinking of. And, um, so can I say it? Am I allowed to say it? No, no it's, it's, not, it's weird it. though, because- no, hang on, Some people look from Cornwall use that like saying twit, so- if people well, are listening to Cornwall, do you know I think, a twit I think is a pregnant goldfish. Well, well, uh, I I learned the uh, I learned the stronger version of twit. Yeah, um, twat. <laughs> <laughs> For those that aren't sure, <laughs> um, I, I learned this at school when I was like ten or whatever, and I didn't know what it meant. I thought it was just a stronger version of twit. Yeah, I thought it was just if you were really annoyed with someone because they were yeah. a real twit. Because uh, I is worse than I. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Apparently, so you know, Carl <laughs> would be a that. twit. And, yeah. um, and so I started using this at home, because I didn't realise what it meant. I started using this at home, oh you twit, you're a twit, and saying it to my dad, you're a twit, you're, you know, but yeah. not saying twit. Yeah. And my dad didn't know what it meant either. <laughs> That's great! Which I couldn't believe. So he started using it as well, right? So uh, then we'd be driving in the car, he'd be saying to my mum, you stupid twit. Yeah. And you know, he'd say to my mum, you, you, you don't pull over, pull over, you're gonna bum it, you twat. And saying this, that I learned at school from Mark Johnson what it really meant. Yeah. Stopped using it, obviously finding out it was quite an offensive word. Yeah. Couldn't, I didn't want to bring it up to my dad. I didn't want to sit my dad down and say, dad, do you know that word we've been saying? Yeah. You know what it means? So now, to this day, I never brought it out with him. So we'll be driving. Driving, you know, he'll be, I'll go in for Christmas, we'll be driving around, he'll be calling my mum that word. <laughs> Left, right and centre. I think she knows. I think she's just embarrassed. Or she's just upset and she knows what it means. She goes, why does he keep calling me this terrible <laughs> word? But he's the only one, I think, in our family who doesn't know what it means. No one's oh. got the guts to say. I don't know whether I should tell him this oh, Christmas. Oh, what a twat. I know. <laughs> Right, well it's time oh. for White Van Man, which is where we ask Carl the questions that the son asks someone else. Exactly. It's um, an article in there where they ask them, you know, typical man on the street, the, uh, the big questions of the day, uh, gives them their platform to the nation, and we think this is just too good to let out, because we, w I mean, we only care about one person's opinion in the, in the, in the country now. That's true enough, he's the K-man, and there he is. There he is, right. Carl, your thoughts, please, on Kylie Minogue slagging off Britney Spears for ignoring her fans at her premiere. Are you aware of that story? No, She, uh, she got booed at her, uh, premiere of her new film. Britney because she uh she left her fans waiting for like an hour. Some of them had travelled up from Bristol, other parts 3, of the country. Three thousand of them. Loads of them screaming for her. She just w went straight into the theatre an hour late, just gave them a quick wave and straight in. Didn't even want to shake their hands, sign any autographs. Off. So they were booing. What do you think of that, Carl? And Kylie's obviously said that was like, say, outrageous, you know, and uh, you should treat your fans with respect. What do you make of it? Um. So she did wave. Like. Yeah, but literally as she was walking into the theatre. <laughs> was it raining? <laughs> no, I don't think it was. Uh He's like a defence lawyer. Yeah. Who hasn't really read the brief. Exactly. So <laughs> no, I was just like just winging it. Judge so first joke, was it raining? No. <laughs> oh shit, I was, I was relying on that. Uh, <laughs> um Was she running late for the start of the film? Yes, but that's her own fault. I mean, the people are inside, they're not gonna start the film without her. It's Britney Spears. Yeah. She could take some time out. You know, when uh, Tom Cruise came here, he spent like an hour and a half shaking people's hands, talking to people on their mobile phones, all sorts. That's Tom Cruise, he's a bigger name than Britney. I know, but he's it's a smaller what, person, but he's a bigger name. What, what <laughs> do people want from people? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, an point. autograph, things like that, a photo. This one's going nowhere, Steve. Is there okay. another one? Fair enough. <laughs> I'd, well, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd, you know, it's not bad. If she had more time, she might have done it. I bet she would have done it on another day. I mean, I'm not feeling too good today. I mean, <laughs> But you're gonna still take time out to sign people's autographs, surely, when you leave the building. Yeah, there's always a bit of a crowd, isn't there? Next. Go on. Uh, what do you make of, uh, a New York's, a New York's ex-police chief saying we need more bobbies on the beat? He's come over here, he's the guy that sorted out crime in New York City, he's come over, he said, you're going all over the place here, mm. you need more bobbies on the beat, not more policemen, more, a visible police presence. There was, there was something last week about, um, <laughs> some copper in London who was sat on a, sat on a bench, yeah. uh, and he was asleep, or something. Oh, yeah. And people were like outraged because like he, he should be looking after you know 
England's people not nodding off on a, on a park bench. Which is a bit daft because- They were shouting he should be looking after England's people. <laughs> yeah. well, no, is that? So, after was, this an, was this the 16th century you went back to? What do you mean he should, he should be looking after England's people? You know, wherever he was, if he was in like a park somewhere, yeah. they, were, like, they were like really annoyed because he was asleep. But sure. He was probably undercover. It, if it, well, no, but the thing is, if there would have been any trouble, I'm sure he would have woke up. Yeah. If there was any sort of, if someone needed help, mm. and he screamed, he would have woke up, so I don't know why they were having a go at him. Yeah. And, and he know. might not, he might not have been there at all, so, you know, it was, you know, so, yeah. he would probably have his radio turned on, didn't he? Yeah. Listening to heart. So you're not concerned then that there's not, that the, the crime's going up? I think there's enough, I see quite a lot of them whizzing around. Okay. You, you're yeah. happy then? Yeah. As long as you're happy, Carl. So you don't think it's too much crime? No. Just the right amount, just the right amount of crime? Yeah. What yeah. about the fact that uh, new gambling laws give Blackpool the green light to become a British Las Vegas? What do you make of that? Are you a gambler? A little bit. When I when I go on holiday, like going in the arcade and having a little flutter. Sure. Um, What's your favourite? I have to go on the, you know, the fruit machines. Yeah. There's a good one called The Simpsons. <laughs> right. Is that um, your favourite? Yeah, it's quite good. Is that a tie-in with the TV show The Simpsons? Yeah. Okay. Um, will they make Blackpool the next Vegas? I don't think so. No, no do I. Can't see it happening. No. You been to Blackpool? Yeah. What was it? Was it it's, a, it's a bit rank. Is it? It is a bit rough. Okay. Needs a, needs a lot of work doing on it. Yeah. Uh, no, that won't happen. Okay. And you're not worried about this encouraging gambling, generally? You, you, gambling's not a vice you're concerned about? Uh, if you're a gambler, you, you're a gambler. Do you know what I mean? If, yeah. if Blackpool isn't done up, they'll go somewhere else to have a flutter. Sure. So it's not gonna make any difference. Okay. No. Okay, it's really good. And uh, what do you make of the So Solid crew's Ashley Walters being jailed for 18 months? Obviously not a very good example to uh, his young fans. He should have got more. Do you think? I had a dream about him the other night. Go on. Um, about, about the group itself. Okay. I had a dream that- Were they I all had... there? Because there's yeah, a lot of them. I, c I couldn't remember all their faces. <laughs> um, the feature in a dream. I had a t-shirt on. <laughs> he had etc. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. Two of them had etc, yeah. I had a t-shirt on. You had a t-shirt on. Yeah, and it said on my t-shirt, So Solid Poo. And I was walking down the street and they came towards me. Wow. That's a great dream. That's amazing. That's an amazing dream. I love that. We've all had- a 30 year old. We've all had that anxiety dream. Oh my goodness. What if I meet the So Solid crew and I'm wearing a t-shirt that slags them off? Oh, I don't believe it. Yeah. You know, yeah. So what happened? Did you get beaten up in the dream? It was one of them where I woke up. Do you know I've been telling you that I keep getting them things where you, you feel like you're falling? Oh yeah. It was the same sort of thing. You know I'm not a real psychiatrist, don't you? You should, you know what I mean? You do know a lot about a lot. Yeah, I do. Thanks very much. And, you know, if I'm at home talking to Suzanne about something and, and I don't know the answer, I think, right, I'll ask Ricky that one yeah. soon. Yeah. yeah, thanks. But you know that, th I think you might have mentioned before that apparently if you uh, die in a dream, it means that you're dying in real life. Yeah, yeah, well that's it, if you don't. But uh, apparently if you get beaten up by the So Solid crew in a dream, it means you're being beaten up by them in real life. <laughs> yeah, that is true. So you probably a lot, a lot of people have been doing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Terrifying. <laughs> Absolutely terrifying. So yeah, lock him up for longer. Okay. okay. Finally, what do you make of uh, Halle Berry becoming the first black woman to win the oh, Best Actress Oscar? Did you see her speech? Got on my nose. Did it? I mean, you know, it's good that she won. You know, it's nice for anyone to win an award. Yeah. But she did go on a bit, and you know, I've I've been in that same sort of position. What <laughs> placing an Oscar? <laughs> well, I got um. It, what they used to do at school is uh. <laughs> okay. If you did a full month without being off, you got a gold certificate. Okay. And I did a month once without having a day off. And sure. I went up and I didn't, I didn't do it, make a fuss. <laughs> you didn't start crying. <laughs> Can't play a record, mate. Well done then. Good Were you the there. first kid in your school to do that? I don't think anyone else got the certificate. It was only because I was never in. They tried to encourage me. <laughs> <laughs> it was just for you. <laughs> you. They mounted an entire the ceremony the just to encourage you. <laughs> We were halfway through, uh, White Van Man. We were indeed, yes. Those, those, um, those lads came in. Getting Carl's views on some of the big stories of the week yeah. from the news. Um, Carl, what do you make of the fact that the British Olympic curling team won a gold medal? I watched it. Uh huh. I thought it was really good. Um, <laughs> the only thing that's getting on my nerves now is like, what was that? Is that a trombone <laughs> player just sneaked in? <laughs> that was me moving this microphone. Right. I'm right incredible, wasn't it? Yeah. What an right, amazing um, noise. The only thing is, <laughs> that shouldn't sound like that, should it? That's incredible. What a shoddy tin pot station this is. Well, we know that. Sorry, Carl. Go on. It's like in all the papers now, in in like the, you know, the Star and the Sun all week. They've been like traipsing models over a bit of granite. Do you know, like how those things are made out of granite, the um, the things they throw. Oh yeah. And it just that that bit annoys me. Okay. The what way that, the Daily Star? <laughs> no, the way that you know. 
this sport, nobody had ever sort of heard of it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Sure. We win a gold ma- medal. Yeah. And now in the papers, it's like they've gone crazy. They've gone curling mad. It. Yeah. It's a good game now. Yeah. Good. Okay. Next. All right. Good. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, what about the fact that the world's tallest man is living in a semi in Neeston? Uh, it's all right, Nick. Um, <laughs> something that someone told me in the week is that, do you know all these tall people like this guy? Yeah. Which is a bit weird they've only just found him, considering he's the tallest man. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a bit weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> someone... <laughs> oh, someone genius. told me that, um... Uh, do you know the guy who was in James Bond, the big bloke? Yes. Jaws. Jaws. He's got the same illness as this bloke. Right. And what it is... It's called it's, tall. It's something about... You're suffering from tall. You've got a, a small tumour or something just behind this part of your head. Yes. Oh, yeah. Just, just sort of in, in the middle of your eyes. Yeah. And, and the pressure on that makes you grow really tall or something. Yeah. So he needs to get it sorted. <laughs> That's your advice to him. Yeah. Get it sorted. Okay, very finally, uh, Carl, this is important. This is, um, just projecting into the future. It's <laughs> Just projecting into the future now, K-Man. <laughs> Apparently, global warming will bring sizzling summers and weird wildlife to Great Britain in the future. Are you worried about that? Um, how soon? Soon enough for you to worry. Yeah, it's pretty worrying. Okay. Um... You don't, you wouldn't prefer it to be sunny here all the time? No, because with hot weather comes weird spiders and that. See, I always think we're quite lucky here. Yeah. If you live in Australia, you might have the sun and stuff, but you've got, like, deadly snakes. Yes. Which are death. Did you know snakes are death? Snakes are death? They don't have ears. Okay. Um, so, you're all right. Walking about behind them. Yeah, but if they see you ahead of you, you know. you're in trouble. But yeah, with, with places like Australia, you know, people go, oh, it's great, it's sunny, but they don't talk about the spiders and... They keep the spiders... Yeah. and stuff. Cool. So I think we've got a bit of the, both the best worlds. So you're worried, though, about in the future, the vultures flying through the sky, we've got various creepy crawly snakes. You yeah. concerned about that? Yeah, well, there's a load... I saw something in the news in the week that a load of sparrows or something was somewhere. Maybe that's the start of it. <laughs> That's an interesting story. <laughs> no. Was that front page or? <laughs> <laughs> There's a load of sparrows somewhere. No. <laughs> Read all about it. Sparrows somewhere. Some sparrows somewhere. Sparrows somewhere. <laughs> load of sparrows somewhere. No. Sparrows somewhere. <laughs> there you go, anyway. Excellent. That's Thank great. You very that's, much, uh, Carl. That's, uh, that's Carl um, giving his views on the news. Don't do that next week. <laughs> Why not? I just, I just don't like it. Why? Pressure. It's not pressure, you did brilliantly. Yeah. Well, it's time. Well. Go on. That time, innit? Yeah. Play Go the on. jingle. Yeah. White Van Man, <laughs> Carl. <laughs> Brilliant. Recorded at great expense, that jingle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is where we just uh, hijack an idea from The Sun, which is um, White Van Man, where The Sun asks, um, in this instance, a cabbie by the look of it. Oh no, um, a fruit and veg shop owner. Ours is, ours is, uh, ours is slightly different because The Sun sort of like, um, uh, pick on a perfectly normal member of the public. Exactly. So that's where we've got the, yeah, <laughs> the upper hand. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, they ask him about the, uh, you know, the hot potatoes. Uh, um, this week, Carl, my first question to you, well, your, just your thoughts, please, on the criticism of the BBC over their coverage of the Queen Mum's death. What do you make of this? You're aware of all the criticism that Peter Sisson's not asked some probing what, questions? It, uh, no, I thought it was- wore a burgundy tie. I thought, uh, that's it, yeah, he just had a, it didn't show respect, he just had a burgundy tie on. See that? That's not really not showing respect, is it? No, it's not. You know, you show your respect by sort of doing the news on it, giving her a, a, a bit of coverage, <laughs> and showing, you know, what a, a, publicity. What, what a good woman she was or whatever. Yeah. And then you move on to sport news or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I totally agree. I, I don't like the way everything's morbid. I was thinking about it. Um, it's like, um, you know, the way in birthday cards and that, people always put funny things in them. I think you should save things like that for funerals, for like funeral cards and that, and and try and cheer people up at times when they're low. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because on your birthday you're quite happy anyway, so you don't need a, someone putting a funny comment in a card. I think you know when you send what, what, a card. What would you What would you suggest? Well, you know, um, whoopee cushion, but on the vicar's chair. What What? How would you like it? Just, you know, just little little things in the card. I mean, you're just writing stuff like, well, you know, at least you're still alive or whatever. So as you're giving the eulogy, <laughs> so oh, that'd be good. So when, so suppose you know, someone's husband's killed in a car crash, you go around with some flowers and a little card, and it says, 
at least you're still alive. Well, maybe something funnier than that. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, like, if you got up to give the eulogy during a, a funeral, just wear a pair of comedy tits. Yeah. Or those glasses that are eyes on sort of yeah. springs. But why have, why has everyone got to be so sad about I someone agree. dying? No, what annoys me is that when you see the people on television, they sort of, members of the public, and they're crying about the Queen Mother, who was sad when anyone dies, sad when anyone nan, nan dies. She was 102. And, um, what, you know, I mean, it's sort of like, I think they think they should cry. Well, I, there's I, a picture in the paper I today. I don't understand it. There's a picture in the paper today of, uh, various people who were lining the pre, you know, the, uh, the funeral, uh, kind of route yeah. yesterday. And there's a picture of a, a very young child, maybe sort of five or six, on the arms of her dad, and her head bowed, and it says a, a young girl there weeps for the Queen Mother. And I was looking at it, and she, you can tell she's just tired. She's well, just she does tired that, and bored. It's so cry? transparent that it's not crying. It's Most just people what are don't we cry doing? When their nan dies, exactly. You know, it's sort of like. Uh, but what is a five-year-old girl going to be? Why is she going to be crying? The Queen Mum said, oh, "I can't believe it." <laughs> yeah. Tully Tubbies? No. <laughs> the Queen <laughs> Mum. Oh, not the tweenies. No, it's all in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> oh oh right. dear. I mean, I, I know, I'm sure, you know, I don't know much about her, I don't know if she was a great woman, and obviously, you know, it's always sad when someone dies, but it's like, it's interesting that there was a lot of tourists in that long line of people mm. that are now queuing for hours upon hours to see her yeah. dying in state, because it's clearly just people who want to be a part must of history. Must be gutting, if you're over from Sweden, and you find out that, you know, the Queen Mum's died. Oh, you must be devastated. You probably don't want to carry on with your visit. <laughs> exactly. Really. Okay, listen, Carl, um... I think we've covered that. What do you yeah. make of the, uh, <laughs> What do you make of the first genetically modified baby? Oh. Are you worried about this? Do you know what did they do? What? Let me see what it says here. It well, says, isn't it uh, just choosing, uh, ju choosing the, you know, eye colour? Well, this or, is the, this is the this is the concern, isn't it? That in the future you'll be able to decide uh, whether it's a boy or a girl, what how intelligent it is, what it looks like, is it handsome, is it ugly? Obviously, no one will choose an ugly baby, and so on and so on and so on. And so, it means that you know, where will it lead? Where will it end, Carl? Are you concerned? I've thought about this a lot. What will us three look like in the future? If listen. they're being, you know, genetically modified beautiful people, what will be, we be like? How will we be considered in that's society? True, yeah. But we've talked about this before, haven't we? About, uh, the cloning thing. Yeah. And that's a bit weird. Yeah. But, um, I don't think it matters because at the end of the day, right, you might look like some other kid, but it's the way you've brought, that you brought up that will change your features and the way you are, you know, your personality. If you lie, you get a long nose, don't you? Well, no, but listen, right, because I remember, when, when we, you know, I was growing up on this estate. This is gonna be good. Go on. No, no, it's not. It's just a, an example of how this doesn't work. Go on. So, so we don't need to worry, sort of thing. Sure. Right? Okay. So growing up on this estate, and there was a there was this woman about four houses down, right? It's a bit rough. <laughs> all right. Didn't fancy her. Oh God, no. Right, but she had a <laughs> Why? baby. Well, tell me about her first. I'm interested in this woman. Why it, was she? It was a very. So like a man in a dress. I mean, I didn't grow up in a posh house or anything. And I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that if you live in a bit of a rough house, mm. you're a bad person. What did she look like? But anyone can tattoos clean up. Look like they, Tony Green with a fag on. They didn't clean up much, right? Oh. Which even if you've not got a lot of money, you can still try well, and make it look nice. Yeah. Right. But she didn't, and a kid used to take a horse into the house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 oh, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 Neddy, whoa, 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 Neddy. What do you mean a kid used to take a horse into the house? When they get a right. horse? Must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> must have Is there using horse in it? <laughs> no. <laughs> what, is that from outside the saloon round the corner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it just tied up with a bit of le <laughs> Right? Um, oh, that's great. I Big, Big Jake, <laughs> I'm looking <laughs> for it. I, I been out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, sorry, let me get this. This was before the lynching stopped or after. <laughs> 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 Where'd he get a um, horse from? What do you mean he must have nicked it? He's going to say, Where'd you get that from? I bought it. Alright then. But <laughs> keep it out of the kitchen. I don't want you going Catlin rustling. <laughs> oh, Where'd he get a horse from, Carl? Just... And how long did he have it for? Until... Was he leading it or riding it? Mum, open the door! I can't stop! <laughs> I can't stop it! Open the patio door as well, I'll be- Looks like we got us a runaway! <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know, but the oh. thing is, they couldn't afford to buy one because they're not cheap. So I'm just guessing. Maybe that's wrong of me. But I, I think- He you know, had a horse? Yeah, right, so- That's I, why the family didn't have any money, they'd spend it on the horse! No, exactly. I don't think- That's what I'm saying, I don't think they would have bought it. So anyway- Yeah, it's so nice to whisper, Carl, in case they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they it's could not, be in the room next door. It's not door. buying it; it's keeping it as well. Oh, but, so I, so I was like in the car with my dad coming yeah. into the avenue, and you used to have to drive down it to turn round, and, yeah. uh, and you know, sort of go back to uh, to our house. You had the traditional method of transport, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, the horse was in the lounge, <laughs> reading a paper, just just like walking around. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, 
And when I when I was doing, I, I tried to earn myself some money once by flogging little flowers in in plastic cups. What? This right. is genius! <laughs> it just keeps coming. What do you mean you're trying to flog little flowers? What do you mean? <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Let's play a record. Let's play a record and come back to this. Because the story's going to just unravel and unravel. It's going to go for hours. Let's play a track. It's going deeper and deeper. It's like an onion, isn't it? We've created a whole world here where there's a man living with a horse. Just walking around the land. When I come from the West Country, I've never heard anything like that. I just think of a big sort of like orange carpet and it's got a rediffusion telly and this horse going, I'm fed up in here. Exactly. This is really. I am not taking the rubbish out again. Yeah. Right, play a record. Let's have uh, Velvet Underground. We've got that lined up. Oh, yeah, God. the classic from the first album. Uh, I'm waiting for the man. Let's come back to the horse in a second. Little flowers in pots. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh. So we were talking. Uh, we were doing White Van Man, and uh, we got onto. Uh, um, we got onto to genetically, genetically modified babies. But and then Carl started telling a story about someone with a horse, and then he got onto. He was trying to make money selling flowers. Just do the flowers. Briefly. Well, hang on. I just want to recap slightly. So there was a family, and who had the horse in the family? It was. Because you lived on a, an estate in Manchester. The, so the, the yeah. mother, the mother was a right pig, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's you relevant. You don't need to go that far. But, but you. But well, what I'm on. trying to do is like make a picture for you so you understand. What, what a picture like? it is. Who did she look like? Um, bit of a. I no disrespect to her. Bit like Pauline Quirk. <laughs> Quirky, yeah. <laughs> Right. <laughs> okay. I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah. I knew it was gonna be poorly. Did she have any tats? Did she have any tats? I never got that close to her. Okay, alright. So, and so who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, her, her daughter. Her daughter had stolen a horse? Yeah, from I don't know where. There was a- I think it was some stables down the road or something. And they- they kept the horse in the house with them? They kept it in the house. Did they, they didn't get have caught? it for long. No. So, and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse no, in No, what there. happened was, I was, um, they did this thing at school about raising money for charity, right? for some local charity and they said you can do anything to, to raise money and they came out with all these ideas and I thought that's good. What was the charity? Well, forget, well I don't know, I thought forget the charity. Yeah, that's I'm just a, a good money making idea. So, <laughs> You're a charity. So, um, <laughs> so I asked me ma'am for some, uh, cause she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said can I just take some snippings off them and uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups and uh, got some soil out of the garden, planted the, the, the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about twenty five plants on it, selling yeah. them for twenty five pence each. Excellent. Did you sell any? Yeah, so loads. Did, they w did you just cut? You didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil. Yeah, they want to survive. Oh. But I think people sort of thought, "Well, good on him for trying." But anyway, so I went round to theirs because I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah, because it's a bit rough. So as I went, the horse went. Thank God for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> so they've been, they've been feeding me kitty cat. <laughs> yeah. So I got up to the door and they opened the door and it was one of them houses where no carpet. <laughs> yeah, a horse in the living room. <laughs> you know, we've all been there. And, yeah. and the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. And I looked quite happy and everything because I always say that about animals. Black Beauty right? was on. No, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Well, think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay, or in like a house with a you central know, heating, three-piece suite, and sure. a telly and that. <laughs> telly and that. Because, no, but I was saying this the other day. <laughs> and an Atari, right? <laughs> I was walking through London. Come on, sixty-four yeah. rubbish. Exactly. W walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And do you know, like homeless people always have dogs. And yeah. she said, "Oh, I hope, I hope she looks after it." And I said, "Dave, got that dog is happier than most dogs, right? Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah, it's with its owner all the time. Yeah, yeah. it's out in the open. It's not locked up in a house. Yeah, it doesn't you know eat. I mean? But other than that, <laughs> no, it does eat. Though they're always all right. So that's what I was saying. I think this horse. Was was doing all right for yeah. itself. Do you know? Daddy, well, not many horses have got their own house. Exactly. For a start, yeah. But anyway, that's that's what, that's what by the by. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, this family, who's a bit w what we were talking about, it was about cloning. genetically modified kids yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Right now, what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right, Steve, you could have a baby, mm -hmm. right, and Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. It could happen, Rick. <laughs> So come on, work with him. So you take it to the doctors, <laughs> and I don't know what they do. They, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah, and uh, get a little baby, and there it is. It looks the same. Now the thing is, you separate. You both go off and do your own things. Yep. Yeah. Right. Now, you look at Steve. Stephen, this is. You look after your baby. Yeah. You treat it well. You give it good food and I'm that. a good dad. All the vitamins and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Ricky just gives it cheese. <laughs> right. So then it changes its looks. It goes a bit fat. You know, it gets tired easily and that sort of thing. <laughs> now, when this family- <laughs> Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? <laughs> right? This, this, um, this, this, this family had a horse in the, in, you know, in their, in their house. Yeah. They had a, a little baby. And my mum went round and said, 
you're not gonna believe this, but it's a beautiful looking baby, right? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. And, uh, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, they didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying, like, abusing it, but it used to run around, it used to play out till, like, ten at night. Yeah. Uh, it used to chase cars. <laughs> right. It was a bit- <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, no. No. <laughs> Chase cars! Right? What sort of kid chases cars? Oh, God. No. Was it called Rover? The weird Did it catch sticks? <laughs> it's Liam it was called, right? Right. Now, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, and all that, like, not eating properly and its hair was all patchy. <laughs> it's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and chasing cars on that, and it became <laughs> an ugly kid. It's definitely uh, Liam Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, uh, what, that's what I'm saying, right? You can, uh, clone, you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. what you brought up. Brilliant. Wow. Whoa. 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 Life. Wow. That was a hell of a point. Oh, God. <laughs> but am I right? Oh, uh, you're always right, Carl. Finally, white van man, what do you make of the fact that Sainsbury's are bringing in square tins? <laughs> <laughs> Is, Is that, that a true? concern for you? Is that true? Apparently so. Why? It's like it's easier to stack. Oh, this is what the guy in the uh, sun has said. That should be interesting. <laughs> 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 that should be <laughs> his comment on <laughs> Sainsbury's are bringing in square tins. <laughs> is no, is that should be interesting for meatballs. <laughs> oh, Ricky's just oh. collapsed on the floor. Let's just play a song, Carl. I don't think even you can top that. See that in Heat this week? What was it? About the campaign to stop Carl going back to Manchester. You know, because he's a miserable sort of northerner who goes London's crap and I want to go back up north. Yeah. And I, I, I only need 40 quid a week to live up there like King and all that sort of <laughs> yes. rubbish. Right, well, uh, um, uh, Boyd from Heat, um, when well, we met him at the, um, that award ceremony. Oh, yeah. And, uh, we were saying about, oh, yeah, he really enjoys Carl. Like, he's getting a lot of, lot oh, of people, people like people Carl. And I was going, oh, yeah, but he's thinking of leaving. He's going, oh, st start a campaign. And he did, and he put it in there. So the campaign, so write in if you like Carl. If, if, if you think he's really annoying, then we'll stop talking to him. Yeah. But, I mean, I like him. I love him. Yeah. Have you ever read the, uh, white man, the white van man column in the Sun, Carl. Seen it, Are you yeah. familiar with this? This is where every day in the Sun they interview a guy who drives a, a van, a white van, just you know, in order to get the kind of voice of the man on the street in the paper, mm -hmm. and he has to answer uh, or just give his opinions really on uh, events that have made the news each week. Just thought we could maybe throw some of these at you, Carl, because we know you to see what your, your views are. Yeah. So um, just the first thing that comes to your mind, the sort of your initial reaction to it's each of these. Top uh, all things, but you don't need to know about them. It's just your philosophy on it. Yeah, so just your views. You know, yeah. I have um, had a few days off this week, remember? So I don't know what's going on in the world. <laughs> yeah, you, you, I mean, you stayed in London, though, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you didn't bury yourself, <laughs> yeah. did you? I normally see the news, but I didn't. This okay. Week. Anyway. Um, so, what your view? What was your view on Will Young beating Gareth Gates in the final of Pop Idol? Don't like him. No. Do you know what I was thinking about when I was watching it all the way through? Yeah. How he looks like he's got a wire coat hanger in his gob. <laughs> that sort of. Right. Again, it's radio, Carl. Radio. It's a great face. It's a funny face you're pulling. Doesn't yeah. You and you know, but. You know, a radio. And it's, that's, that's a problem for you, is it? And, uh, and just the way he's from a really rich family. I mm -hmm. opened up the paper on the, on the Monday or something and it had like, oh, he went to a posh school and he's got loads of money already. Yeah. It's just a bit... Okay. Know, yeah. Right, no, what's okay. the second All question? Right. Um, there have been huge rises in street crime, especially muggings and carjackings. What's your view there? More youth clubs are needed, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> you think more youth clubs? I like that. No, I can't. No, I like that because it's so 1950s. Yeah, it's, it's sort of funny. like you want to bobby on the beat that clip yeah. you around the ear. So once they've come Is out of national service. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I love that. And, and if you find someone smoking a wood bomb, you make them smoke 50. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, this is great. That is great. Did, did you, did you used to go to, uh, youth clubs? Yeah. And they, they kept you out of trouble? Uh, you used to get into a fight afterwards when sure. you came out. But for the sort of hour and a half you were there. You had a bit of pool and some boxing and yeah. a bit of pop. Yeah. <laughs> so I more more youth clubs, that's good. I love him. I um, love him. If you're at home, t just make notes, because this is brilliant stuff. Honestly, you won't hear more honest, from the heart exactly stuff opinions. than this. This is great. Go on. This is not pre-planned. These are your direct responses now. Oh, I, pr I promise you, Carl did not know what we were going to do. He never knows what we're going to do, and he always answers honestly. That is the beauty of Carl. What is it's your not view an act. On. What is your view, Carl, on New York's former mayor becoming Sir Rudy Giuliani? Sir Rudy Giuliani. Is he happy with it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He appears to be pleased with it. Let it go ahead. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> okay. Let it go ahead. Oh, he's genius. Okay. Um, is he happy with it? He's like your nan. Yeah, yeah. Is what do you make of uh, Michael Greco's character Beppe being axed from EastEnders? Uh. Problem for you? The whole soap thing. What's its back in Coronation Street, isn't she? Uh, what's her name? Who? Beth. Beth Lins. But, she yeah. thought she'd go off and be yeah. a bigger star. Yeah. All went wrong, and now she's coming back. Yeah. yeah. Always happens, doesn't Beppy it? will be back. Yeah. No one really cares. Sure, sure. Yeah. What was, what was one? the van reply? What was the guy? The white van <laughs> man says, uh, obviously they feel the character has run his course, but yeah. I think <laughs> he's a pretty good actor and I can't understand why. See, I mean, obviously there's a, a white van man there mm. who's also got an opinion on script the, development. The through line, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The narrative uh, the, through line of soap opera. The, the, the twelve week narrative, the, the arc really showed it's itself up. The two, two last ones I want your opinion on here. Um, what do you make of a cat that's been cloned in a secret 2.5 million research project? To find out what? If what, they can clone, clone cats, yeah. Have they had to hurt it? Sorry? Have they had to sort of hurt it to do that? Have they had to hurt it? Yeah, or is it just scraping its tongue for some stuff? <laughs> I no, think the cat's fine. The point is that they're cloning a, a, another creature which is potentially very dangerous. Have you seen that film where they bring Hitler back? <laughs> <laughs> that cat. What if that cat turned out to be a world dictator? Exactly. What do you reckon of no. cloning generally, Carl? You concerned about it? I well, I think they're cloning for organs, I you know, they, they just grow them for the, you know. Do you know what cloning means? <laughs> yeah, it's when you like make something else that's the same, isn't it? Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's not going to do any harm. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> great. and finally- We're new on the World Council. Yeah, yeah. Finally, uh, what do you make of some city workers who were caught bonking in the glass lifts of the Lloyds building? What do I make of it? Yeah. Is that a problem for you? Do you think that's unprofessional? Was it the lunch break or- I think it was lunch break. <laughs> yeah. It's alright. Is their, their own time, <laughs> I think, fair enough. <laughs> it only takes 45 seconds to go from the bottom to the top. Is that a problem? They moved quickly. They acted, you know, on instinct. You think fair enough if, they, if that's their natural instincts and they're both consenting? You think fine? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks very much, Carl. There's little Carl over there. Uh -huh. Steve, it's time for White Van Carl. Uh, <laughs> we should definitely get some jingles. I think it, it, the show sort of lacks jingles. I think yeah. noises, yeah. funny sound effects. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> <a> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's Mr. Nosy Neighbour interested in? Hello? What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should definitely get some pre-recorded comedy noises, Carl. Yeah, yeah well, that's my job, but unfortunately I'm busy reading about Hitler. <laughs> 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 oh, um, oh. For those that don't know and aren't familiar with this feature, basically uh, The Sun runs a white van man column where um, it asks uh, just people who, you know, every kind of, every every men and women, their views on uh, news stories from the week, and uh, we decided we'd just ask Carl his opinion on some of the same issues. This week- Not like um, us to rip off another idea and just no, use no, it for no, our own- no, 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 but this time- The yeah. white van man in The Sun this week is Herbie Crossman from Harrow and Middlesex. Um, Herbie. And he's been asked, he's asked, uh, asked his opinion, Carl, and what's yours, on pop idol Will Young admitting he is gay. Come um, on, Carl. It's- I don't understand what the big deal is, to be honest. Okay. No. Talking to different people about it, and they've said, oh, it could affect the sales, you know, girls won't like him anymore, which I think is- is rubbish. Yeah, because it finished George Michael's career, didn't it? Well, yeah, and I was thinking when I was growing up, right- And, and Freddie Mercury. I was into, uh, Kim Wilde, right? Sure. Now- And her kids You're not gonna tell me she's gay, are you? No, but if she was, if they said, oh, she's- she's, you know- a, a leather, yeah, right. Mm. I wouldn't say right. That's it. I'm taking kids in America back to the shop. I'm disgusted. Sure, I liked her. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm ever gonna like meet her and, and marry her and that. So what does it matter? Yeah, Will Young, he's a good voice. He's gay. You know, a lot of gay people in the world. Georgie boy was gay. I guess. There you go. Nothing more and nothing less. The kindest guy I ever knew. So Do your Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. That's one of your favourite songs, isn't it? Brilliant. Killing a Georgie parts one and two, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, um, what do you make of the police protesting to Parliament over reforms? That's not the band, before you say. Right, what, what's all that about? <laughs> okay, well the police have uh, had various kind of gripes and grumbles which they've taken to Parliament, trying to get them sorted. Like what? Well, it could take ages, basically. They, they don't like the pointy helmets anymore. Yeah. They want flat caps. They feel that their, um, they, you know, they, their powers are restricted, they get a lot of bad press, they're not being paid well, they they're under resourced. They, they actually, um, demonstrated, didn't they, outside I think they may have done, yeah. yeah. Well, at least they're doing something about it instead of just sitting there moaning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. They go, they're going to the top, trying to sort it out. Yeah. Yep. I admire that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. What they, do you make of the police generally? Are they doing a good job? Um, they've woke me up a couple of times at about four in the morning when I was a kid. Right, was that because they were looking at- they That's were right. looking for your brother in his tank? 
<laughs> yeah. Did this German tank just come through here? Yeah. No, my mates nicked cars and gave my name and all that. Right. <laughs> Were they friends of yours? <laughs> Right, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, what do you make of fears that dumped Britney Spears, she's been dumped by her boyfriend, there's worries that she may be cracking up, Carl? What, you concerned? What, what are the signs? Uh, well, uh, I'm not entirely sure, I'm just reading from this section, but I would assume that she's obviously showed signs of depression, maybe? She'll be alright. I remember, like, you know, <laughs> Zoe Harris, when she sort of got bored of me when I was a kid. Yeah. Get over it, I don't even think about it now. <laughs> 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 what, uh, and how long did it take you, how long did it take you to get over it? Zoe Harris. How long did it take you? To be honest, right, it was like one of my first girlfriends and she was a pain. I remember, I went out with her because <laughs> she wouldn't stop hassling me, right? Yeah. I remember- <laughs> I could that, I love that. Oh, go on then. I never talked to her and then, <laughs> the bit that really got me, I thought I half liked her and then I remember, right, we are at a school party, sort of infant school. <laughs> <laughs> Infant school? Right. Are you sure it wasn't junior school? Well, it's on the cusp. Yeah. Right, when you're about to leave infants and go yeah. to the next one. Yeah. And, um, she was crying because- You were saying, I don't think we should move in together. <laughs> <laughs> he was crying! She was crying! Oh, oh was she? Had you she stolen her milk? She must have been nearly six! Why did she grow up? No, so she, was, she was crying because somebody had stood on a dress and put a bit of an hole in it. And I said, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> I can't stand it. Oh, so you <laughs> I just think him. So you gave her a slap. I just think of him he's like six, like with clogs and a flat, flat cap going slightly bald, going for yeah. Christ's sake, woman, come on. <laughs> oh, light my pipe. Oh. That finished it because all the mates were saying, "Come on, Carl, she's upset," and I was like, "Oh, whatever." <laughs> So <laughs> Hold on, though. No. Wait a minute. What do you mean all the mates were saying, look, come on, Carl? They were six, weren't they? Yeah, but they were saying, come on, she's crying. Help her out. And, like, and you did nothing? I don't know. She got injured. <laughs> got a hole in a skirt. Yeah, but she was upset and you were her boyfriend. Well. So what did you do? Tell me the story. Where were you? Work out. You were at some kind of school do. <laughs> there was a hole That's in her dress. That's why it didn't work out, he said. I don't, do you treat your current girlfriend in the same way? This callous disregard for someone's feelings? Cur his current yeah. girlfriend does not tread on her dress. Does yeah. she? Yeah. Oh, she didn't So, as far as you're she? concerned, what was her name? Sarah? Zoe. Zoe Harris. She just felt like, well, you know, if she's gonna make a whinge about, you know, a silly little hole, screw her. Yeah. You're all, you're all heart, Carl. What would you have done? I'd have gone over there and given her a lovely kiss. No, you wouldn't. Yes, we I would. We were playing dead arm. <laughs> <laughs> In the I was giving another oh, question. Okay, very final oh. um, thought then. Uh, what do you say to the fact that judge, a judge has decided that uh, we, the general public, have a right to know about uh, stars' flings? Basically, this is an excuse. This is basically saying, should pra papers be allowed to print tittle tattle about celebrities? Oh, this is providing it's proven true. Oh, th this is something about, isn't it, a Division One football or something? It's definitely out of, of uh, Premiership football. It's unfair, and it is true. But he's trying to keep privacy, and the judge said, well, it's not for us to sense the press over things that are true, right. it's up to the general public to either boycott or not, you know, that, that publication. What do you think, Carl? What about all this, you know, exposing, uh, going through the, uh, you know, the bins of celebrities? It's not right, is it, but no. people are uh, interested in, in it and buy the papers to read it, do you know what I mean? I mean, like I said to you the other week, everyone has to go at Beckham for not being that bright, but at the end of the day, he's a good footballer. It doesn't really matter what goes on yeah. off the pitch, does it? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So but what if you were a celebrity and they sort of splashed over the front page the fact that you just, you know, didn't care less for Zoe Harris because, yeah. Yeah. and her torn dress? Zoe Harris is still upset. Yeah, they dug her out, you know. The night Carl Pilkington reduced me to tears. <sighs> nah, I haven't done anything that bad. Sure. I won't be worried. Did you win the dead arm contest? No. <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day. Do you think there's a chance I could get blood clots in later life? <laughs> Did you play that a lot? Yeah, a hell of a lot. Did you ever do it, but like, kind of headbutting? No. Okay. Because that would have explained something. Dead arms. Sure. Any more? No, that's it, Carl. Um, it was with do. people's blessing, was it? You had to give them a go? Yeah. And you played it with girls? No. Alright. Oh, and my mates. Right. So oh, you okay. were playing dead arms while she was off dancing and getting her hole ruined? Yeah. <laughs> you romantic, you. That's great. <laughs> and you haven't changed a bit, have you? You still do that to this day, don't you? At functions and events. <laughs> Okay, we just do white van Carl then. This is this is your opinions. You can't be wrong on this, can you? There's no, no right or wrong answer here. <laughs> okay. Right. 
But, so this is where we ask Carl his views on the, uh, the big news stories of the week. Basically, we've, we've stolen an idea from the Sun newspaper. And, um... So this isn't cruel, this program, is it? Oh, uh, I don't think so. Picking it's on not, me. It's not, is it? Uh, it's weird, because a few people have said, oh, you're picking on me. See, it depends how you look at things, isn't sure. it? Sure. Yeah. But you do, do you like it? We, I mean, we could look at it like it's a laugh. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. it's not but a problem for us. You know, we like you. You know, you're, you're our favourite, yeah. I'm gonna say thing in the world, but I don't mean that, you know, in a derogatory way. No, no, it's, I'm cool with it. Yeah? Yeah. Right. Okay, so, uh, your views, please, on the fact that, uh, attitudes are changing to the possible marriage of Charles and Camilla. Oh, what do you think of that? Um, the, the roars at the moment, because the recent tragedies are, uh, apparently, uh, high in the polls, and people are coming round to the idea of Charles and Camilla getting hitched. What's your thought? Um, whatever, really. I mean, if they're happy with it. The thing that <laughs> comes out of it most is it just goes to show, right, that there is someone for everyone. Just because, I mean, no disrespect to Camilla, I'm not a good-looking person either, but she isn't a stunner, and yet she's gone and picked up a royal. <laughs> right? Yeah. So I think it's good for things like that to happen, because it cheers you up, do you know what I mean? Uh, gives you a bit of hope. Thanks, Carl. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's, it's, you know, if, if they're happy. If any, anyone's happy, it's a good story, innit? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know, he's had a bit of bad luck. And, uh, and now he's, he's got someone el else in his life, so. I'm just, while he's doing this, I'm just doing a list of questions to ask him what he thinks of things in the world. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, just, yeah, no okay. Problem. Um, okay, what do you, uh, make of, well, now listen, this may be a non-story, or it may be the biggest story that's about to break. Ulrika Johnson and Sven Goren Eriksson's affair. Are you familiar with this? It's over the papers today. Apparently, uh, Ulrika and Sven are going out, although there appears to be no evidence for this. Yeah, I don't even give it time of day. Do you not? Know right, I mean? right, well done. Doesn't, doesn't affect me whatsoever, as long as he does his job well. Yep. And what's she doing at the moment? Presenting Dog Eat Dog, I think. Right, you know. As long as she does her job well. <laughs> as long as they both do their jobs well. Well, yeah, at the end of the day, yeah. I mean, that's going on with a lot of people out in the world, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Just cause he's an England boss, as long as, you know, we win the, win the games and that, he's yeah. doing his job. Mm, mm. If she's, you know, gets a dog winning a prize or whatever. <laughs> no. <laughs> you okay. It's not worth yeah. it, Karen. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So... <laughs> it's a dog winning a prize. I haven't seen Dog Eat Dog. What's okay. it about? It's all right. It's all right. No, so, go on. so that's it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. okay what about this then? Uh, are you, uh, <laughs> disappointed by the nation that, uh, a third of us are apparently unaware of St. George's Day? 23rd. Is St. George's Day the one with the snakes that we've talked about? No, that's... Are, that's you, are you one of that third, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> St. George is the patriot of England who, uh, killed the dragon. Yeah, I mean, there's too many of these days, isn't there? That's the problem. If mm. you make it a bit more special, mm. like Christmas, so you buy t presents and that for each other, then people will remember it. But there's so many of these days with mm. Easter and Pancake Tuesday and all that. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's not surprising. I think as time goes on, we'll find that a lot of these days will just disappear because you know people are busy. There'll be new ones, won't there? Uh, I don't know. People. There'll be like busy. Gareth Gates Day in fifty years' time. It's just weird. Yeah. I mean, I remember being a kid, right? Going out on a Sunday and shops would be shut mm. because it was like, you know, the day of rest and all that. People don't care now. It's like, well, we can make some more money, we'll open the shops. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's Is that a good or a bad thing, Carl? Uh, it's good because I remember I used to have to get up early to go and get some bread if we didn't have any in. Because <laughs> the shop would only be open for a couple of hours in the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whereas now I'd be able to. Yeah, I remember that. In. I remember that. Shops are. And you couldn't get aspirin and stuff, exactly. certain things. Yeah, nightmare yeah. on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. So That's right, yeah. And pubs didn't open oh, for 12. Today. Do you remember space operas? Yeah. Yeah, shut up. Um, um, can I ask you something? Go on. Okay, I've got a little list of things. Um, what do you think of, like, those pug dogs that are bred and they can hardly breathe? Evil. Yeah. What do you think of, um, uh, gays? Uh, they're all right. Do you know what I mean? Just like straight people, you get bad ones, you get good ones. Exactly. Hey? We've learned a lesson today, haven't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. Let's play a record. Yeah? What do you fancy, a bit of Radiohead? Yeah. <laughs> You don't mind, though, if people think we're gay, for instance, when we go to the Baptist tomorrow. No, that's no. terrible. I don't want that happening. Why? Hey? Why? Because I'm not. That'd be a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like lying. If I was, I'd say I was gay. Yeah. But I'm not. We'll say you were. Just pretend. We won't get in otherwise. No. Just a little kiss and a cuddle. Say I'm, I'm a bit gay. No. Cool. I'm not gay. Come. 
Should we do it now? Well, let's- I think we should have a, a white van man session. Oh, white van man Because I think man people tune in for the white van man yeah, session. Yeah, people who haven't tuned in, they don't know. If people aren't familiar with this, uh, <laughs> The Sun runs a column, uh, every day which is, uh, asking some punter from the street their views on the week's big, uh, events, and we just thought why not hijack that idea, but apply it to Carl Pilkington. I Carl? I seen much news again this week. You've not seen much news? Don't worry, I'm sure you have an opinion on just it. Just have you, just g give us yeah. it from your heart. So sort of gladiator. Okay, so, well, on the subject of gladiator, what do you make of Russell Crowe's appalling behaviour at the BAFTAs? This is, um, I heard a bit about this. This is, um, when he, he got some director or something, cause- Director or producer and threatened him, cause they cut his bit, didn't they? they yeah, they cut a poem that he'd done during See, the acceptance speech. I, I watched it on Sunday night. Sure. I didn't realise it wasn't live, to be honest. Yeah. But, um, I quite liked the way it was to the point and didn't mess about. It was- he went up, he said thanks. So you're saying that he shouldn't have beaten up the, uh, director? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're basically saying? It's a bit over the top. You thought I so? I mean, <laughs> if you yeah. didn't have time, if you really- I mean, what's- what's the poem got to do with the- the film anyway? He- he was an awards- So do you think it's ever justified to beat up a TV director if you're a major Hollywood star? Depends what he's done, but I mean- <laughs> Right, what would he have to have done, Carl, for it to be fine for him to then beat him up? The thing is, right, forget all the beating up. At the end of the day, it was a awards thing for a film. The poem had nothing to do with the film. Yeah. So go up, collect your award for that thing. And if you really, really wanted people to hear about this poem, he could have photocopied it <laughs> sure. and left it at the entrance and said, on your way out, this is a really nice poem, pick one up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is, he knew it was televised, so he knew by saying that poem once, he was reaching five million people. That's a, that's a lot of photocopies. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm yeah, not saying he was justified. It wasn't, it wasn't a poem award. If it was a, an award show for poems, you'd say you can't cut it out. It'd be like doing the top 40 and then going, number one's good, but we haven't got time for it. <laughs> but, but it's a films thing. Okay. And he went up and he got the award for the film. Which film was it See, for? I don't know. But when I wanted to give you results, I said, I said, let's give Carl his results. Steve went, no, we should introduce people to Carl again. Just remind people what Carl's like. And he's so right. I'm so glad we did this first. <laughs> I'm alright though. Or Carry I'm on, wrong. Steve. Okay, the next, uh, the next topic, um, what about this big debate over whether Kylie Minogue has had a bum job? I'd have to see it. <laughs> <laughs> next! <laughs> okay. Um, uh, what do you make of Will Young's single? He's the pop idol winner. Uh, it's gonna, uh, net record-breaking sales, apparently. It's gonna yeah. be straight to number one. He's had millions of copies sold. I heard last week that you had to, um, <laughs> if you wanted to buy it from Woolworths, you had to go in and put a pound down to guarantee you're getting a copy. Wow. I think that's stupid. But what do you make of it though? Do you think- what, um, as a song? As- both as a song and do you- are you excited about Will Young and his future? No, he'll do alright. I don't think we- we have to worry about him. Okay. He'll- yeah, he'll do alright. It's not my thing but he seems like a nice bloke. Okay, good. very good. Um, what one do you make- One final one. Yeah, one final one then. Um, what do you make of our scientists getting the go-ahead to clone embryos for research? We have discussed cloning before. And obviously there's, uh, the pros and cons of that. Christopher Reeve, former Superman star, he's behind this. Are you behind him? Yeah. I mean, with everything, you have your good and your bad, don't you? Yeah. At the end of the day, uh, if you didn't have bad things in the world, then you wouldn't enjoy the good things. I think, you know, it's like if you didn't have robbers in the world, policemen wouldn't have a job. So it's the same thing. It's like, it's an illness. Yeah. So what, 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 what are they messing with? It's probably a bit too detailed to go into there, really, but, um... Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's- it's good and bad. You can't have it all. Yin and yang is what you're saying? Yep. <laughs> okay, Carl, I can't argue with that, mate. Express 2 featuring David Byrne, Lazy, XFM 104.9, Quarter to 2, I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve's got the sun. Yes, I'm just gonna- we're white just gonna be doing Colin. White Van Carl, where we ask Carl the questions the sun asked some <laughs> other bloke. That's right. Because we think Carl's got more to say than anyone on anything. Yeah. Carl only tells the truth, by the way. Just remember that, listeners. Off you go. Yes, um, well, today's white van man in the sun is John Slade. He owns his own door maintenance company. <laughs> um, his, uh, his answers are very informative, I have to say. But Carl, what do you make of, uh, the Channel 4 producer, aged 30, who duped a school into believing he was a teenager? For a documentary, are you familiar with this story? No, go on. Well, basically a thirty-year-old guy kind of fooled the school into, um, into thinking he was a pupil for a, a secret documentary. The school's outraged. Do you think that that's, uh, you know, any, for you, you know, should anything go when it comes well, to making TV? I think I've said to you before, 
um, there's loads of kids at my school. I remember being in the first year, and kids who what did what year do schools go up to? <laughs> I was in the first year. What what is it? Eleven. Five. Oh, sorry. First year of infants and juniors. No, secondary school. Eleven. Right. Year eleven. Um, kids no, on beards. And no, stuff. not year eleven. They're eleven when they first go to secondary no, school. No, right. Well, I'm eleven. The kids at the uh, at the older well, end. Well, there's a well, fifth form, and then you can leave form, when you you can right. leave when you're sixteen. I think, can't you now? Right. Well, kids who were sixteen. Yeah. Looked old. They had they they did have beards. I remember going there and thinking some of them were teachers. I think he's answered that. Next one. What's the next <laughs> yep. one? Tattoos and everything. Um, I think uh, they're kids in the in the earlier years even. What do you make of the fact that Mariah Carey's thirty eight million pound payoff has cost EMI staff? Uh, their jobs, and we're talking 1,800 EMI staff who have lost their jobs. What do you think of that? Yeah, I mean... I mean, is that silly money, Mariah Carey, on 38 million? She doesn't need that much. She doesn't need that much. <laughs> she but has to dress nice, though. It's not her fault. I'd say, um, <laughs> it's bad business. Okay. Because, uh, EMI, did you say? Yes. Right. They've got rid of them, them staff. Yeah. Mariah Carey's left. Who's gonna do the work? <laughs> <laughs> you think, do you think Mariah should come back and do some temping? Well, they should have. They should have got a loan and paid her. Okay. Do you know what I mean, vicious circle that. <laughs> right. Have you have you done? You've done a business degree, only, have you? You did commerce. Yeah. Where, where did you do that? What did you do with that? At school. I'd, I'd learn how to fill out a check, <laughs> pay a bill, and uh, I think I, I had a trip round Kellogg's. <laughs> Did you, uh, did you get, uh, did you get an O-level or did you see <laughs> We know he didn't. You know. <laughs> but was, uh, was there a commerce exam or was it just a division of maths? Remember. What did you fill out a was check? It a subset of it maths? It was an option, it was like, if you want to do it, you can <laughs> What do. was it? Fill, fill out, out a check, check fill pay, out a check, bill, pay, pay a bill, pay a bill, have a visit round Kellogg's. I met round Kellogg's and I saw my sister's boyfriend there at the time, he sorted me out with some variety packs. Really? What was in them? You know, Rice Krispies and... <laughs> Good stuff. Cocoa Pops? Space. Dust or whatever it is. Space dust. <laughs> so, sorry, that wasn't Ken Dodd, though. No. <laughs> that was someone else. Was, that was an aunt. <laughs> that was, yeah, yeah. That wasn't special K. Oh dear. What well, about this then? Home Secretary David Blunkett admits that muggers rule some streets. Um, weird this, because when I was out with you, I don't believe it's going to be weird. Whatever you say, no, Carl. No, when, when we were in that pub that night and we got talking about muggers and that, the tip is um, what I tend to do because I nearly got mugged once. Act you what? You nearly got mugged once. I nearly got mugged. Yeah. But I, I, but I tried this technique <laughs> of acting a bit mental. <laughs> right, and how did you act mental? Well, this guy wanted me trainers. And uh, I was in Piccadilly Gardens in Manchester, it was quite late one night. Mm -hmm. And he came up, he said, uh, I want them trainers. I said, you want them? I said, I worked hard for these. He said, how dare you come to me asking, and I, I got a bit livid. And I <laughs> He looked at he looked at me like oh my god he's got a right one here and he left me. Were you acting mental or were you just mental? No, I, I put it on a bit. Were you not tetra petrified though? Well, you don't think about it, do you, when you're sort of in the eyes of danger? <laughs> well, not you. Clearly, you're a brave man. So what did the you say? I, ju I just I just went I just went a bit mad. <laughs> I just kind of because he said he wanted the trainers and the, they were dear ones at the time, and uh, I just no, you're not having these. So I've crafted. You, I said I wanted these trainers, yeah. and you know, went on to tell him how I work out printers and I don't enjoy it, and you know, I put in all these hours and that, and I have to cycle home for about five miles. And I did he give you his trainers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did he have a knife? No, I just left. No, it didn't get that. Didn't get that violent. Well, that's very brave of you, Carl. Yeah, it's that's good. good advice though. Just that mental. Um, uh, <laughs> See, what's it? Should he tried it the other night? Oh, Liza Minnelli. Yeah. Well, she says I, well, I've worked hard for these diamonds. <laughs> yeah. It's not easy being the daughter of Judy Garland. You don't know what it's like. Uh, finally, uh, apparently, um, there was a crook that got a job, a security job at Heathrow. Right, he was a crook and he got a job at Heathrow. Crook. Uh, as robbers steal another two million pounds. Apparently security down there is lax. Yeah. Is that a concern for you? Is this another... Yeah. Two million? Yeah. Why, why is all this money at the airport? <laughs> Um, it's those sandwich shops. You know how they're really expensive, the sandwiches in like, when you're <coughs> on a plane? They're like £8.50 <laughs> for tuna, which is ludicrous. Yeah. That's basically the reason. What do you mean, why is all this money at airports? What, what is it doing there? Why is Have a go, just... have a go. No, have a go answering this yourself. Why is anything at an airport? It's going somewhere. Or coming in from somewhere. Yeah, but money, you can sort it out through the bank, like phone banks and that. Have you done commerce? You know a lot about...
paying bills and writing out checks. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Tell us about Kellogg's. What was uh, it like? What, what was in the factory? Was it just like squashing bits of corn? And pretty boring, really. Just loads of conveyor belts, um, yeah. boxes of cornflakes everywhere. Just what you imagine. Yeah. I so was it more? This is where you it. might be working. <laughs> this is where you're likely to work. Possibly. If you there was two trips. There was that and a trip to Manchester Evening News. Okay. And I, I left that early because I had a job in um, Cordon Bleu. <laughs> Kellogg's. <laughs> Cordon uh, Bleu. What's that? It's like so a supermarket. Yeah. And I, I had to leave the trip early, and the teacher went mad saying. Uh, they thought I'd got lost on the, you know, in the building and stuff. Well, you didn't tell anyone? Or, no, because I w it was like day two of working in this supermarket and I couldn't be late. I thought by the time I explain where I've got to go and everything, it'll, I'll be even later. Sure. So I just left and then apparently they were searching the building and everything for me. How old were you? Stuck in a printer. Um, <laughs> don't know. Stuck <laughs> in a printer? I don't know. <laughs> what was the printer's name? <laughs> <laughs> You worked at a supermarket called Cordon Bleu. Yeah. Cordon that Bleu! Brilliant. <laughs> That's <laughs> great, isn't it? It's rubbish. Oh. Got sacked. You had to what, what'd you get sacked for? Messing about in a, um, the, back in the, in the car park round the back. Yeah. Uh, there was, there was a grid and, uh, all the concrete had gone funny so when it rains you got like a big lake. Oh yeah. Right? And I got in, do you know those big metal trolleys you get to like put all the food in while she- Oh out? yeah. And yeah. I got in one of them and pushed myself out into this lake. Of cement? No, I was water. full of oh, it water because right, it'd been right, raining, right. and I got stuck in the middle, right? And the boss was like, "Where's, where's Carl? He's meant to be doing, you know, facing up the beans." And I was like, <laughs> "He was so, stranded in a lake." So someone said, "Oh, you, like, I saw him messing about out the back." He came out and saw me stuck in the middle of this <laughs> <laughs> lake in, like a, in a trolley, and he said, "Get back in!" I said, "Would you say no? I'm, I'm, I'm said, filming sharks." I said, I'm, I'm, "It's too deep. I can't get out. You'll have to pass me something." And he said, "I'm not passing you nothing." He said, you can get out of there and walk through it. I said, I'm not. I've got my trainers on. Probably the same ones, Yeah, you've actually. risked your life for them. Yeah. I said, I'm not getting these wet. I said, I he said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to wait for the water to go down the grid. He said, the grid's blocked. Now get out or you're sacked. I said, well, I'm not getting out. He said, right, you're sacked. So, so you were sacked. How long did you have to wait for the water to go down the grid? In the end, I did get bored and I sort of did a bit of a leap and a jump and got one foot wet. Uh, uh, how long were you waiting? Probably about half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Just think of it. <laughs> Just I mean, how did he get himself into that situation? <laughs> That's fantastic. Should we play records? Oh, definitely, definitely. That's oh, a choice. joy. Oh, you're an absolute pleasure. More White Van Man next time on the show. Now it's time for White Van Man. White Van Man. Um, yes, for those, that, uh, those yeah. that don't buy the sun, they think it's beneath them. Um, <laughs> White Van Man is a column they have, I think, every day, actually, and uh, they just get sort of some, you know, Joe Public to kind of comment sure. on the week's news. Just seemed to me, uh, you know, that it might be interesting to, uh, to get Carl's views yeah. on some of the big not, events. Not because we, we think that Carl hasn't got a valid sort of viewpoint. No. Because Carl sees the world differently to some people, that's all, and that's, that's what's interesting. You know, like an artist does, or a... Exactly, yeah, he's a, very bohemian in his outlook. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you feel that you're up to scratch on this week's news? I don't like this, but... Don't you? Don't, just relax. Why not? Really? It's pressure. No, 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 because you just have to give us your first opinion. For your honest answer, that's all we've ever asked of you, Carl, and it's all you've ever given us. Your honest, your first from the heart of you, yeah? All Don't right. worry, just relax. No, just chill in. Are you worried that people are listening and thinking you're an idiot? If my girlfriend's listening now, go and have a wash or something. Go and have a wash? <laughs> Not very nice, is it? <laughs> Is it the opposite of Napoleon and Josephine? <laughs> yeah, go on, go on. If, if you're going to visit me again, Josephine, for Christ's sake, what? Well, I'll ease yeah. you in with something fairly easy, a, a music-based question. Um, Kylie Minogue versus Dido as Queen of the Brits. What's your view there? Um, <laughs> go and have a watch. It doesn't really matter, does it? Um, <laughs> what does it really matter? <laughs> with the Brits. I was watching it the other night, and um, I think Kylie will be a good-looking old woman. I want to, uh, Steve. I want to celebrate with you every time he opens his mouth. Doesn't matter. I want us to open a bottle of champagne. I know what you mean. Do you know um, what I mean? It's yeah. like we did that. Yes. No, do you, like, do you, do you do that though? Look at people, and uh, another person who springs to mind, Jenny Powell. Hmm? I don't think she's that good looking now. Who's but, Jenny Powell? Is she that girl that used to be the si the assistant on Wheel of Fortune? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she's a bit over the top for a young woman, but when uh, she gets older, I think she'll look be a bit of a stunner. Mm. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So for you, Kylie, you know, whereas you don't feel that about Dido, is that right? She's all right. She's normal. I prefer Kylie's sister to Kylie. Okay. Looks, you know, she, I can imagine her being a hard work to live with. And Who, Kylie? Not right. Being washing up and that. Right, sure. <laughs> right. Okay. 
Huh. And what do you make of uh, taxes rising in the next budget to pay for NHS improvements? Well, my dad went to hospital to have an operation once. Yeah. So I feel like it's worth paying it because I've, yeah. I've got some. Because people, because people might go have to go to hospital. Yeah. Yeah. But it makes a change when it's someone in your family, doesn't it? Yeah. Because you sort of realise. Yeah, a change is as good as a rest. And the weird thing is, if you want for me, dad. I wouldn't be here doing this show because when he was in hospital. Well, no, I'll stop you there. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, that, that's <laughs> all you need to know. You, you wouldn't be here true, but no, but well, no, no, because this was after I was born, so I wouldn't be here. <laughs> but well, so for his more direct involvement was what? Yeah, because when when my mum was seeing my dad in yeah. the hospital, I got a bit bored. <laughs> went for a wander, found the hospital radio station. Yeah. And got a gig. Really? So in in a, in a real sense, if it wasn't for Carl's dad, Carl wouldn't be. Here. And did your dad, like, while he was listening to you, did he, like, sort of tap the nurse and go, can you get that twat off the air? <laughs> Who's put him in that? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay, um, what do you make of the real-life Mowgli who's surviving in a Transylvanian countryside? Apparently, I don't know much about this story. I don't you, know. What, you know Mowgli, he's, he's the guy from the one. Jungle Book. Yeah. The little oh. kid that grew up um, with bears and animals and stuff. Apparently there's a real-life one in Transylvania. What, what were the things in Gremlins? <laughs> what were the what? Look, in Gremlins, they were... Wait, 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 wait. Okay, this is an example. This is what your girlfriend said. Think, what were the things in Gremlins called? I can't remember. Just, I mean, really... It's something like that, isn't it? No, no, wait, 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 wait. Just really, really think now, Carl. Just with all, with everything you've ever... With all the brain power you've ever used, think what the things in Gremlins were called. It's not there. There's a clue here. Oh, no. Yeah. It's not. What? Yeah, play a record, Carl. Oh. <laughs> right, White Van Carl. Carl, Carl, it's real. White Van Carl. Yeah, this is where we steal the uh, White Van Man column from the Sun and basically uh, fire those questions at Carl, uh, getting his uh, opinions on the week's news. Okay, Carl. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, what do you make of this? The average woman, apparently, takes 27 minutes to get ready to go out. Did you know that? Is it... <laughs> are they saying that's that's a good thing, or... No, they're okay. saying that the bare minimum... It no, takes, no, average, this is what surely. Saying, no, no, no. But I remember reading, I'm sure they said that um, it takes them 27 minutes to get ready to go out, at the very least, I, I think. It's, it's not that bad if it's for a night out. It's... That, I mean, 30 minutes is all right. If it's but, going to get to 20 woodbines. But, <laughs> yeah, or, you know, if the house is on fire and it's, like, quick, <laughs> yeah, get ready I, and get out. I, I, don't, I don't think it's in a, in a, a fire, no. I, I think, yeah, go on. I think twi- that's, that's 27 minutes. Do do I'd take about 27 I, I minutes. I can take up to that. But they, they, do they include the getting up and having a bath? Does that? it give me any more details? No. Well, I, it's difficult to go by. It's difficult to go on that one, isn't it? How long does Suzanne take to go out of the house? Depends. Like I say, if, we, if we're just nipping out shopping, uh the old flip-flops and trackies on. Yeah. But if you're going out for the night, it takes a bit longer, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you've got wire in the flip the uh, trackies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, um, okay, no, really don't know what the ins and outs of this story are. Is Van Goren Eriksson sticking with Nancy rather than Ulrika? Well, it's his wife and that was his girlfriend. Yeah, I don't know, you know if, if, those, if the story's true. No one seems to have offered any evidence for it. Anyway, maybe Everyone remained yeah, silent. It's rubbish. And, uh, okay, what do you make of this? David Beckham apparently was driving despite having an injured foot. And uh, just further threatening his World Cup chances. Now, obviously, you're a big football fan. Well, I'm, I'm not that big. I like, I like the odd game. Sure. Uh, Would that hurt him? Would that hurt his foot? It can't be good. Is it in a plaster? It's not well, it's, a big it's car. Sure it's sure it's better to drive than it is to walk on it. <laughs> good point. Fair <laughs> enough, yeah. Of course. Can't argue can't with can't that. Can't get the bus, can he? Okay, and what do you make of this uh, fascist leader who's having a lot of success in the French presidential elections? What's he doing? Have you not, <laughs> you not come across this story? No. Right, this is one of the big, big political so, stories. So he's got a far right that got nearly 20%. He's a far-right fascist leader and he's uh, having uh, considerable success in the French elections. I don't think we should be asking hard questions like this. Not something you've got to I, I, I'm getting scared. There's all sorts of bad stuff going on in the world that we don't know about. Yeah. Know. Um, but we know about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're better off not knowing because there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> you're absolutely right, Carl. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I can't argue with that. Oh, oh God, that's man alive. fantastic. That is brilliant. Uh, what do you make of Olympic ski hero Alan Baxter testing positive for drugs? What did he do? Well, he won a gold medal in the Olympics, and for he what? he was a ski he was a skier, right? And he won gold medal, and uh, they've just tested him positive for uh, some kind of illegal drug. 
But what, I mean, if he did, why take drugs to ski? <laughs> why Because all you do it? is balance. But imagine, it'd be amazing if you were stoned, like, going down a hill. Yeah, it's not like you yeah, have it's to- not, it's not gonna help you, No, it? it's, it's just like... gravity that's doing all the work, isn't it, with skiing? Yeah, but it's often to do with your, uh, athleticism, isn't it? It's not- No, but like saying, and we've just found out the people on the toboggan were on crack. It's not- it's not gonna <laughs> help them. <laughs> You, yeah, sh you sit there and you go with the flow. Yeah. And you could try I, could, it I, and you hold could I say? Could I say? The, the, the drugs Apparently he was taking. That's his defense. Probably. The, it, it, it wasn't. It probably wasn't jacking up H or you know dropping a few E's or getting stoned. He was probably taking more sort of uh, you know, performance enhancing drugs as opposed to just like scoring some shit around the corner but, from someone, getting off his tits and jumping in a toboggan. <laughs> doesn't mean that, yeah. does it? He wasn't, yeah, he wasn't <laughs> off his nut. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have, you have, uh, you tested you, you pissed out your head. But why doesn't he just say, don't be stupid, why would I do that? It's just not gonna help me out. But it is, isn't it? Cos, uh, performance enhancing drugs do. Wait a minute, Steve, wait a minute, Carl. Right, look at this way. Okay, look at me, yeah? I've got, have I got his attention? Yeah, the, 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 the lights glint glinting off your ring there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tragedy. Okay, right, now, keep concentrating. Right. Some athletes, you're aware they take drugs, that's to build up swimmers muscle. Swimmers and stuff. <laughs> yeah, swimmers. Runners. Example, runners, yeah. No, not only do they help build muscle, right, but they, they can actually, you know, give them a boost performance while yeah. they're sort of like steroids and all, all this sort of stuff, right? So that's the sort of thing we're talking about, okay? Right, so again- He, wa he wasn't on a bong help before- you? What? Why would that help you when you- all you've got to do is balance on skis. <laughs> not uh, when you're at the Olympic level. Yeah. There's a lot to do with, you know, your body and no, your legs. No, it's practice, isn't it? It's like, if, you, if, if you've skied for years, then you've got good balance after a bit. Oh, okay. do you know what, Carl? Do you know what? You've made a mockery of drug taking. Well done. Yeah. Right, next one, Steve. I ate this bit. I ate this. Um, I don't know if you saw it. What did you make of Posh Spice's Warts and All documentary? <laughs> yeah, I saw a bit of it. What did you make of it? Um, uh, I mean, people are slagging him off, aren't they, saying, you know, she's daft and that, but... <laughs> don't make you! She's... <laughs> I, I think they're alright, honestly. Yeah, you know, right. She's alright. I mean, I think David's really a decent bloke. Sure. Um... Would you agree that he's quite a simple man? Yeah, but he's a footballer, he doesn't need to be, do you know what I mean? It's like me. Yeah. Like, you know, alright, I only got an E in history. Sure. But knowing about the Tudors doesn't help me press these buttons and put the next CD on. No, sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, good luck to him, and he's done well out of it, and it's just yeah. jealousy. Yeah. I remember though, um, when I, w when I was back in Manchester, I was in Piccadilly train station, and he was there, right? Not as big a star as he is now, yeah. back then, but he was stood there, and I, I was so close to going over to him and saying, did you go to my school? Because I recognised his face, oh, but I no. didn't know who he was. Do you know when they <laughs> sort of go, sure I went to school, it's not the one with the big head. Yeah. <laughs> but I do recognise him, then my girlfriend got off the train, and I said, I'm sure I know him. She said, yeah, it's David Beckham. And I was oh, so close to Oh, thank God for your know girlfriend. Does she, <laughs> does she get an awful lot of scrapes, does she? She <laughs> does, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, what more. about the fact that, uh, the pension crisis sure. is gonna force Britons to work into their 70s, Carl? You might have to carry on working into your 70s. Before you can claim a pension. I think it's a good thing. Um, cause you see a lot of old people who look bored. <laughs> okay. And I honestly think if you, you keep, do. if you keep your brain busy, yeah. you'll live longer. Yeah. It's only when you actually shut down, right, that that's when your body sort of dies cause it, it doesn't feel it has a purpose. Yeah. It's like if you've got flu, mm. keep going to work. If you have a day off, you just feel worse, you'll mope about at home, doesn't do you any good What about, wh where do you draw the line there, though? What if you, say, lose a finger? Pop into work? Um, depends. If, if you can't concentrate because it's painful. But right. what if you're a typist? <laughs> you're pianist. not gonna type as many words, but you, you'll do more at <laughs> work than you would having a day off at home. Sure. Okay. Um, Tony Blair turning trendy with his, uh, Paul Smith designed naked lady shirt. I don't know if you've seen this, it's the one no. with the uh, pictures of naked ladies on the cuffs. And? You know, I mean... Okay. Um, and finally, uh, that, you See, this is what annoys me about this feature. It's just, what's that? So what? Yeah, but it's the pres- it's the Prime Minister of this country wearing a trendy shirt with naked ladies on the cuffs. <sighs> Alright. <laughs> okay. And, uh, finally, what do you make of the fact that Top of the Pops have banned, uh, Will Young singing both tracks, uh, on the number one slot, and, uh, consequently he wasn't on there at all, they had to show the video. The first time anyone's ever made this demand. He wants to sing both the A and, uh, B side. Well, he can't. It's, a, it's double A, yeah. Double A side. That's right. what he wanted to do. That is now it works, is it? Yeah, I agree, yeah. And the thing is, which one... I mean, at the end of the day, loads of people have bought it, haven't they? Isn't it yes, like one of yeah. the best? So it doesn't really matter what it does, because people have got it, they can listen to what song they want at home. Doesn't matter about what Top of the Pops do. Yes. And... It's just annoyed me now. I don't... It's... 
Who's annoyed you? Th this, th just what goes on in the world. I'll tell you, you're better off not knowing. <laughs> I, I, it's better being in my little world. If that's what people are talking about on the streets and asking the white van man, do you know what I mean? You I think that? you're right, Carl. I think you're Jeez. right. Shall I, shall I play a lovely song for you? Because you're getting all stressed now, aren't you? I've not had a good day. No, I know. We tell you about it. It's not a good day. Well, I'm going to play um, uh, a, a Neil Young track here of Harvest. It's uh, Alabama. It's, it's, it's beautiful. And this is for Carl. <laughs> Can I just uh, make a request? So I'd quite like if you know if we've got time to bring back um, just for one week only White Van Carl, sure. because there's some quite interesting topics this week. Oh, is there things happening in the world? There's some Carl things happening. There is. <laughs> no. For those that uh, don't remember this particular hot feature, <laughs> um, yeah. we basically ask Carl some of the questions that are asked of a white van driver in the sun. They always have this on Saturday afternoons. Anyway, here's the first one. Uh, they're not fascinating, Carl, but I'm just interested on your take, really. Yeah. What do you make of Scylla Black quitting Blind Date after her husband sent a message from beyond the grave? Are you familiar know, with this story? I didn't story? know that. What's, yeah. what's that? She went to see a medium and uh, supposedly her husband passed on information through the medium, which was incredibly vague, but um, persuaded her to quit live on air. Well, it's about, it's about time, isn't it? If even dead people are saying... <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> enough's enough. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Oh, but I'll tell you what though, talking genius. about- talking about ghosts and that, do you know how I'm into them? Yeah. yeah. Right? How weird do you think this is, right? Well it's not true. Before you say it. <laughs> play a record. No, go on, go on. <laughs> go on. Right, it's this woman, <clears throat> oh. I don't even know if it's ghost really, it's just a bit weird. Sure. Yeah. Sure. There's this woman, yeah. and she's- well she's not a woman, she's a kid. Sure. <laughs> Okay. Sure. She's, she's walking down like a, a street in her area, it's a nice day and everything, everything's normal. Um, she's walking down and a woman comes up cycling past, right? The woman on the bike looks at the kid absolutely terrified, right? right. Got a really scary face on her. Yeah. The kid's thinking, why, why is she doing that? Yeah. Right? So anyway, she thinks nothing, nothing of it, goes, you know, I think she was playing in the park or whatever, goes and has a nice day. About fifteen years later- Oh, no, right, yeah. She's, I don't know, I think she was going to work, right, on a bike. She was riding her own bike. Riding okay. her own bike, cycling down the road. Oh yeah. Looks at the kid. That's the thing that happened like 15, 20 years ago. Right. It's her on the bike looking at her as a kid. Right. Not, you, not, not another child. No. Nope. So right. it's her, she's seen well, herself. Uh, what, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know where to start. Firstly, where does this information come from? But I mean, wh why do you ever con- I mean, I don't know what part of that you think can be true. I- I don't- I- I- I'm honest, I'm- oh, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's a bit weird though, isn't it? <laughs> but it's not true. It didn't happen, nothing happened like that. She said it did. Well, Who? she's wrong. Who? She said she saw herself. She saw herself as a kid, didn't she? Did she come and, uh, and as up? an adult when she was a kid? <laughs> did, did she stop <laughs> and talk to herself, or did she ride on by and think that's a bit weird? There's me as an eight-year-old. <laughs> I won't stop. I'll be late for work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm late again, the boss said he'd be in trouble. Yeah. Oh. Well, and where is this information? Was it? Did it happen to someone you know? No. Nope. You overheard it on the bus? No, it was in, uh, it's in the fourteen times. Ah, oh, right. Well, uh, okay. that's the answer. Good. We've okay. got to the bottom of that. Right, good. Um, <laughs> brilliant. Now, what do you make of David Blunkett accusing gangster rappers of making kids believe guns are cool? It's a hot topic there, Carl, and I imagine you've got some, uh, strong opinions. He's- he's saying what? He is saying, basically, that all this rap music is, uh, advocating gun use and violence against people, and he's very worried about it. Nah. Okay. All right. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> Have you thought about going into politics? Because I, I'll tell you this: they wouldn't be able to argue with you, really, in the houses of parliament. Uh, uh, no, where, where would they start? Yeah, my lovely <laughs> fellow, he's an idiot. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, violence has always been about, isn't it? Like cowboys and Indians, they didn't have playstations and two pack then, and there was still violence. What do you mean? In the Wild West? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you can't really blame it on stuff. It, it'll always happen. That's you know, that's the world, and it? it's made up of different types and that. Again, he's right. Again, he's he's sort of right in a way in his in his innocence in his buffoonery. I didn't hear what he said. He just said there's always been violence. You know what I mean? It's sort Even, of like you know dinosaurs. Look at them. They they cause a lot. <laughs> and of then trouble. he went too far and made himself yeah. <laughs> sound no, like a fool again. again. But I'm just saying, it's always happened. It always will. Yeah. Don't you know? Don't try and change it. 
Yeah, yeah. Just chill out is what you're saying. Do you know, uh, do you know what we should do? We should, we should all get on our bike, go and find ourselves when we're little and go, be careful what you do in life. 